Hello, it's Travis Legletter, Extension Weed Scientist at the University of Kentucky. And today we're looking at trial 20-18, which is evaluating non-glyphosate options for control of Johnson grass. So uh, glyphosate alternatives. Currently in Kentucky, we rely heavily on glyphosate for Johnson grass control. So it's looking at um, the use of other products to control Johnson grass in the absence of glyphosate, uh, if we have resistance to glyphosate, or if we have a corn hybrid that is not glyphosate tolerant. So I'm um, looking at a couple of those scenarios. So uh, we've looked at this in the past, but reevaluating it, coming back to it uh, with the, the knowledge that we likely will be facing some glyphosate resistance in Johnson grass here in the near future. Uh, this corn was planted on May 4th. Um, all of the applications of these products were applied on June 1st. The corn was at V5, approaching V6 at that point in time. Um, so today is July 1st, so we're a month out from that application. You will notice in many of these plots that we have a lot, it's a heavy Johnson grass population, um, and that Johnson grass has uh, started to regrow or reemerge from the rhizomes um, in most of these. So we'll point that out, but we'll also try to dig in there and point out um, where these products worked on that initial flush. Uh, in this type of population, we really needed a second post application with most of these products. The limitation on a lot of these products is going to be the fact that uh, we were really at the max growth stage for the corn on most of these um, so in a lot of cases we would have had to come back with drops on a few of these there's only a few of these that were allowed would be allowed to come back with drops and we'll point those out as we get to those so um, let's go ahead and start looking at this so here is uh, glyphosate roundup power max at 44 fluid ounces and so as we go in here We'll kind of go back here. You can see, you can see there's Johnson grass in there. Uh, most of this stuff is what's emerged since the application or come up from rhizomes since the application. It is a pretty healthily established population. But as we get back in here, you can see um, the carcasses on the ground. We did take down uh, quite a bit of Johnson grass, that initial flush, and some big Johnson grass. That's the advantage that glyphosate has. We can take down big Johnson grass with it, and that's why it's been kind of the standard for the past um, decade for Johnson grass, or past couple of decades. Um, glyphosate does a good job on it. On this population, we needed another application or another post application to get that cleaned up. Um, again, would have had to have been a directed application. So that's kind of the standard right there. So next what we'll do is we'll look at um, a couple of ALS inhibitors. So we'll start out with Accent Q. This is Nicosulfuron, and this is uh, one of the products that we would recommend as an alternative to uh, glyphosate if you needed an alternative. So Nicosulfuron, uh, one of the ALS inhibitors, you can see in this plot as well, you have some newly emerged, uh, likely emerged from rhizomes, but maybe some seedling as well, Johnson grass. But as we go back in here, um, you can see the carcasses that we did take down quite a bit of that Johnson grass that was here whenever we made the application. So you can see those carcasses, and as we go back in here, you can see a very large Johnson grass plant there. Um, that one was at least 12, if not 16 inches tall. Whenever we made the application, you can see we we suppressed it, but we didn't get control of it. And that's something to be aware of with um, this product as well as several of the other ALS inhibitors as we look at them is they're really going to work best on Johnson grass that's six inches or less in height. Once we get higher than that, we are going to struggle with it. Accent Q again uh, is a product that we can come back with with drops and direct application and in this plot probably would have been needed uh, but just for a broadcast application we are right there at the max with this product so that's Accent Q Nico Sulfuron. So let's go look at another ALS inhibitor and uh, we we'll have to skip around just a little bit here um, as we go down but what we're going to look at next is Resolve Q, which is going to be Rim Sulfuron. Okay, so another sulfonylurea, another ALS inhibitor. And so it's going to be a pretty similar story here with Rim Sulfuron. Not quite as effective as Nico Sulfuron, but still is going to do a good job on some of that small Johnson grass. And we'll go back in here and look at some of the, you can see some of those carcasses in there. Um, again, we do have quite a bit of reemergence. Um, which would have required, which really we should have need, had a second post application in here um, with something that we could have directed onto it. So that's uh, 
that's the key here again with this resolve queue we were right at the max and same as with the uh, nico sulfuron with the rim sulfuron it's going to work best on large or i apologize it's going to work best on small plants and it's going to struggle against those large johnson grass plants so six inches or less is what you need with that resolve queue and then what we're going to do is go down here and as we go by this is a completely randomized block you can see the untreated here so it's uh you can see how big that Johnson grass is in the untreated where we did nothing. And here is Steadfast Q. This combination of rim sulfuron and nick sulfuron. And again, uh, we took out a lot of those small weeds or those small Johnson grass plants and did a good job on those small Johnson grass plants. And as we come back in here, you can see, I'm um, just going to highlight again works uh, really well on small johnson grass but when we get to the bigger johnson grass this would have been 12 to 16 16 inches in height when we sprayed it um we suppressed it for sure but uh, we didn't kill it so uh certainly got some suppression on it but didn't get complete control there so again um a, a good product a good combination of those two als inhibitors we just need to get it on small johnson grass so uh, Nick Sulfuron and Rim Sulfuron, or the combination of those two and said FastQ is what we're typically going to recommend as a glyphosate alternative um, for Johnson grass and making sure we just get it on small Johnson grass. So uh, let's bounce back here. And what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at another ALS inhibitor combination, and this is Spirit. Permisulfuron and Prosulfuron, a couple, another uh, combination of some sulfonary areas. And again, with Spirit, it's gonna do a good job on that small Johnson grass. It does struggle with the larger Johnson grass and mostly what you're seeing in there now is regrowth or growth of re-emergence of some new Johnson grass from rhizomes or seedlings. So um, that covers your ALS inhibitor options. So now let's look at um, a HPPD inhibitor option. Um, and that would be Timbotrione and that's going to be Lotus, okay? So uh, another uh, HPPD inhibitor that uh, we're not going to show you today, but we did evaluate would be Topramazone, which would be Armazon or Impact, and the results from these are going to be very similar. And as we go back in here again, you do see some regrowth there. We did get some initial, some good initial control or initial suppression, but not as good as what we got with those ALS inhibitors. So if you look in there, you don't see as many carcasses um, it, we just didn't get quite the control with this as what we did with those um, ALS inhibitors. The HPPD inhibitors, Timbotrione and Topramazone, we do get uh, a little bit of control of Johnson grass, but we're not going to expect it to be complete control. So if you have a light infestation, smaller plants, um, these HPPD inhibitors can help you, uh, but they're not going to do everything for you so um, again that would be lotus uh, caprino would be another one uh, as well as armazon and impact so um, just a couple hppd inhibitor uh, examples there and then what i want to look at next as a new option that you will have um, depending on what type of corn you are planting okay and that is a sure two so a sure two is quizolifop Backing up here, you can see this corn is still pretty healthy. So this is enlist corn. So enlist corn, not only did we get 2,4-D tolerance, but we also get tolerance to the FOPs or Quizolifop. And that enables us to spray Quizolifop on this and get control of that Johnson grass. So you can see with this, we took down a lot of Johnson grass and a lot of big Johnson grass. We took down little Johnson grass and big Johnson grass. So we'll keep on going back here to show you some of these carcasses in here. So we took out the initial flush here. Again, you have quite a bit of reemergence that's occurring. Would have needed a second application. Um, unfortunately, with this, uh, we don't have uh, the ability to direct it. So we would have kind of really needed to come back with one of the other alternatives, uh, such as one of the ALS inhibitors, uh, such as Accent Q or um, glyphosate in this scenario again we don't expect a scenario for all farmers but uh, initially we got really good control with that assure too and that's something that the enlist corn brings to the table as another alternative for johnson grass control and uh, really the smaller the johnson grass the better um, but we did take down some big johnson grass with that assure too 
And then finally, one last thing that we'll show you here is we just threw this in here to look at it. We didn't expect much from it, and I don't think we got much. Probably the worst treatment we have, and that is Liberty. Um, there's no secret about it. Liberty is going to struggle to control grasses, and it's going to struggle to control Johnson grass as well. And as, if you look in here in this one, it's not just um, new emergence of Johnson grass, but it's failed control of Johnson grass plus new emergence. Uh, overall, the density in here is much thicker, uh, much more competitive. Um, we did suppress some of that Johnson grass. It's not as bad as the untreated controls, but uh, I don't think we're going to be happy with Liberty as a Johnson grass alternative, and that's what we would expect. Uh, but again, just wanting to rehash those. So again, Johnson grass alternatives to glyphosate. Uh, Likely the best alternatives are going to be Nick Sulfuron and Rim Sulfuron or the combination. Uh, Spirit, which is Pro Sulfuron and Premi Sulfuron, also look very good. Um, or a Sure 2, if you have endless corn, is also another option. So with all of these, the smaller the Johnson grass, the better. And in this scenario, we really needed a second pass, and that's where it gets critical. And products like Accent Q or your Nick Sulfuron being able to be direct applied is really going to help us out. So this is trial 20-18, sponsored by the Kentucky Corn Growers. We appreciate their help on this, um, and that is all for today.